If I don't have a clear goal, every action I take takes more energy than it has to because I worry if the thing I'm doing is the best thing I could be doing with my time. And by having less energy throughout my day, I'm prone to get distracted by my phone or useless activities. From my last newsletter, I concluded that one of the solutions to solve distracting myself with my phone is to explain to myself my big ambitious vision with the most amount of detail possible. My reasoning behind it was that by having a very clear vision, I will finally understand why it's so necessary to not waste time on my phone and finally bid alongside other solutions, the urge to grab my phone while I'm working towards my goal. And here's a list of problems that I have by not having a very clear goal. I'm more prone to distractions. I feel that my work doesn't matter, more specifically every video and edits I make feel pointless. I don't know what skill I should develop next or what course I should take. Measuring progress is hard or impossible, both in my edits and career in general. It takes longer for me to make decisions in my edits. There's probably more problems that I have by not having a very clear goal, but those were top of mind when I was writing this newsletter. And at the moment, it felt necessary to research the science behind goal setting. And as per usual, I had to go to Andrew Huberman. So here's what I took away from his podcast. It's not exactly what he said, it's just my interpretation of them. The correct way to set a goal has three steps. Detail and visualize the goal, break it down into actions and steps, recognize possible roadblocks, personal shortcomings, and any problems that may occur in the process. Goal overhauling, choose a priority goal. This one is easy to accomplish for me. I'm only prioritizing building this video editing agency and all the other big areas of my life, fitness, family and relationships are on a great enough level, but in maintenance mode. Pursue lofty goals. From what I understood, pursuing realistic and small goals is counterproductive. It doesn't give us enough arousal to pursue the goal. But obviously, if the goal is way out of reach, it doesn't help either. So I feel that my 10k a month in profit video editing agency with happy employees and awesome clients seems to me to be big enough and not out of reach. I actually feel that 10k is not big enough, but the point of this week's newsletter was to actually understand what 10k a month means. I think that with social media, I made myself believe that 10k is nothing, when in reality it's a shit ton of money, especially if it's doing something that I'm obsessed with. Define verb actions, measurability, and specificity. Verbalizing the goal. Instead of saying that I want a video editing agency that generates 10k a month in profit, I could say that I want to work for clients who are obsessed with their craft and I will guide them in content creation and I will also take care of the editing and uploading. And that work will be fulfilled by editors who are hired and trained by me. That to me sounds a lot more actionable and clear. And the funniest thing is that I only came to that conclusion because I was writing about it, which shows the power of writing and why I'm doing all of this. Measurable and quantifiable goal. In my case, I have a measurable goal to earn 10K a month in profit, and then I can break it down into quantifiable sub goals. 5K a month, 2.5K a month, 1250 a month, and 625 a month. So that was everything I gathered from Andrew Huberman that was of use to me. So now let's go to describing and visualizing my goal. Let's start from the top. I know I mentioned this a thousand times already, but my goal is to make a 10k a month in profit video editing agency. But what does that mean? I will need clients that want to grow their business through social media and since they can't do it all, they want someone else to either do it for them or help them in the process. I don't want to limit myself to any part of the world, so I will be fulfilling the work remotely. So the clients will have to record the footage by themselves which involves effort on their part. But I want to make that as seamless and effortless as possible. This requires me to understand their business, their industry, creating content by yourself, storytelling, writing, and a bunch of other things. That's why I believe a big part of my job will be to come up with a content creation system that can be personalized to every new client, but at the same time, it has a structure and templates that make it plug and play. That content creation system will require an editor to receive the footage, edit it on time to pre-establish standards between me and the client, and upload it following a schedule, which leads me to having employees to fulfill that work. I believe that my job with editors is to make their lives as easy and fulfilling as possible. I want each video they make to have a very clear purpose. That way they don't have to guess what edits they should make, which for me is the number one thing that frustrates me when working for clients. They 
most of the time they don't even know what they want. So that way they know exactly how much time and effort to give to each edit before passing on to the next one. I want to train them to not only make them better, but also know what they are capable of. That way those pre-established levels of edits are realistic and not a burden to the editor. I don't want to set unrealistic deadlines, that way they don't burn out and they have extra time to experiment and try creative edits so they can improve while working and also enjoy their creations. In terms of the workload, I want everything to be based on results. No silly backs and forths, nor feedback regarding subjective opinions of me, the client or the editor. I believe that editing is just to make sure the story and message of the video get told in the most efficient and powerful way possible. And I believe that it doesn't involve silly retention and chaotic edits. I believe it involves telling a great story and being authentic. The tough part there is that in order to have a great story, the clients have to be great. That's why I want to work with very valuable and powerful people who are obsessed with their craft. But also, that's why I believe that I have to become great and valuable myself first. That's why I'm learning how to write and how to create content as a first step prior to building this video editing agency. I'm learning the effort it takes to come up with ideas to write about, practicing how to write, how much time and effort it takes to film, edit and post videos and a bunch of other things that are involved in the process. But now it's time to conclude all of this writing and this video and look at my new refined goal. Build a content creation system that allows you to create authentic and sustainable workload wise content from the get go. Sell the system paired with my guidance and editing labor to businesses or creators that I find online and love what they are selling and putting out into the world. Hire editors to fulfill the work in a work environment that provides training and resources, clear guidelines and expectations on the work assigned, fixed salary that's based on quality and output, not hours work, allowing editors to work for as long as they want, as long as they meet every deadline. Deadlines are set by constantly measuring the output of the agency to make sure to never accept an unrealistic one. This puts in so much better perspective the actions and patience I have to have to not only create a 10k a month in profit video editing agency, but also maintain it. And I feel that my goal is now broken into three sub goals or better yet sub actions, which the most important one right now is that content creation system, which is why I started writing a newsletter in the first place and making videos out of it. I feel that writing will be the foundation of that system alongside documenting instead of creating. If you follow Gary Vee, you know exactly what that means. I could have also written about possible roadblocks I expect to encounter in this process, but I ran out of time while writing this newsletter. Besides, I'm happy with this new perspective and refined goal that I came up with. And the whole point with writing for me is to move the ball forward a little bit in every rep and make as many reps as possible. Not trying to make every single one perfect. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe to all my socials, YouTube for the long and short form videos, then X, TikTok and Instagram to consume my short videos and uploads. And obviously my newsletter, you can subscribe to it and read it online on my temporary website, which is Beehive. But yeah, again, I really appreciate you watching.